What would you do if I sang out of tune? Would you stand up and walk out on me? Lend me your ears, I'll sing you a song. I'll try not to sing out a key. We are tuned in, kind of, to fitness and consciousness. Today's episode is called Singing Out of Key, Singing Out of Tune, whatever it's called. It's called something like that. So, uh, you ever watched the, the Wonder Years? That was just a, such a great show. I loved that show when it was new. And I started watching it again. And uh, the show isn't about that show. But as I hear, um, you know, the opening song, it's that one. And, uh, you know, it gets you thinking, you know, of course, it's a Joe Cocker song. And but he's up there saying, like, you know, what, what would you do if I sang out of tune? Would you stand up and walk out on me? So if he's putting on a, let's, let's talk about like literally for a second. So he goes and he's putting on a bad show. So even though he's this great legend, I love his voice, his music is awesome. I bet he's had some shows that maybe he just wasn't all, all there. Maybe he was a little under the weather. Maybe his nose was clogged up. My nose is a little bit clogged up right now, which is kind of interesting because I had planned on, you know, kind of singing that first part before my nose <laughs> fell clogged up and started sneezing and stuff today or yesterday or whenever it was. So it was kind of funny that that happened. But imagine you go to see him and it's not the same as the time before you saw him. Oh, he really was awesome that last time. This time it wasn't so good. So that's kind of taking it literally. But let's look at what does it mean? What else can we get out of that meaning? It's like if you're with someone, you have a partner, your wife, girlfriend, whatever, and she says something and it pushes your buttons and maybe she meant to and maybe she didn't. But what do you do with that? Can you just let it go? and just look at her for like what she's overall trying to do. Cause we all have bad moments. We all say things that come off different than we meant it. Or maybe we did mean it like that at the moment. Maybe we meant to push a button, but that's not like ultimately what we want to do. Can we look past somebody's um, mistakes that they make in a, maybe a, a heated moment. Maybe it's just a, something that just like ruins the mood for <laughs> whatever. And maybe it's completely unintentional. Maybe you take it wrong. And that, ha I think that can happen a lot also. I mean, you look at, if you ever look up like what do song lyrics mean? So like, say you have like, Oh, you love this Pink Floyd song or whatever. I wonder what it means. And you, so you Google what it means and then you find these different websites that have the meanings of songs and you have all these fans chiming in. This is what it means. So I was like, no, it's not. I've been listening to Pink Floyd since 1974. That's not what it means. It means this. And somebody else was like, that's not what it means. Clearly it's this. And even people who love the band, love the music, love the song, can't necessarily agree what the song is about. Isn't that interesting? And we're talking about like one song that's been, you know, this many words and people can't uh, agree on what it means. So imagine over the course of a relationship or even like one, even like the first date, like how many words get said and you can have, you can just take one out of context or one out of not understanding the context or maybe it just, um, maybe it triggers something in you that the other person has no idea about yet. 
So what do we, what do we do with that when that happens to us from either perspective? I'm going to read a couple things here. Uh, before I read, uh, I always drink out of my, my dad's coffee mug when I, when I do the show. I, it's almost always coffee. Every once in a while I'll put tea in it. But this is uh, coffee as usual. And I usually have incense going. And by usually, pretty much always. And today's incense, I know where he got it. See, my dad died in 2005. And he, he gave my mom some incense. And I don't know exactly when he gave it to her, but I'm pretty sure he got it in Nashville, Indiana. Uh, I can't remember the name of the store, but you go up some steps and then they have a bunch of incense and stuff in there. I'm pretty sure that's the store. I wasn't there at that time, but just by the look of the incense, the smell of it, I'm pretty sure that's where it came from. So we're talking about incense I'm burning right now. That is, well, if he died in 2005, it's 14 years. There's only so many of those left. I don't have a lot more of them. Uh, I also was burning, I usually like light a little bit of sage before the show also. I have two sage bundles that friends gave me, different friends, and I'll burn them, uh, a little bit of each of them. So I'll light them, set them down, and then uh, I'm getting my everything ready for the show and and today like one of them like was going a little bit more than what I wanted it's like sage is good but you get too much of it it gets to be uh, overwhelming pretty fast and though they uh, so I had to put it out uh, instead of just letting it like a little bit of it that was burning go out on its own So when you have that, okay, so if we can take like that, so you have, you, you light the sage, you want the sage to be burning, but not too much. So then I, I had to, to put it out. So then it gets back into this state where of, um, <laughs> where we can like homeostasis almost, right? Like this, uh, back to this natural, uh, healthy, state where we can coexist and that means it's out at the moment i still have it but it's not i have to sneeze <laughs> ah. sorry i probably won't bother with hitting mute if i sneeze but sometimes that's how relationships work aren't they like with male female like you meet and maybe you find each other attractive and uh, then maybe you kind of date and then that that's not really working. So you end up just being friends and then maybe like some dating sparks up again and then just back to friends and then just like, okay, yeah, we should just be friends. This is now this is what both people want at the same time. And here we are. So it's kind of like the sage. Like, like, yeah, let's burn it. But we can't like just, would it go for too long? It needs to be put out. I still have it. Makes sense. You know, I'm, am I making sense here? So some things are meant to, we're well not meant. I don't know if they're meant, what, what they're meant to do. But some things work out like that where you meet, you start dating, get engaged, get married, and then all that kind of stuff. Maybe you get divorced. Maybe you get married forever. And maybe once it starts smoking too much, like a sage bundle, you got to put it out a little bit. It's good. And if it would have just kept going a little bit, that would have been fine. But it got too much. You got to put it out. That makes sense. I hope it makes sense. So I was looking through some books, um, to what, what to read. So like, um, I, I heard myself say, um, 
So one of the things about this podcast I was talking about, what made me, what gave me the idea to begin with was I listened to one of my past podcasts and I was saying, um, a lot. I said, um, a bunch of times and that's, it doesn't sound so good. I think it's okay to say, um, uh, here and there it's natural thing to do. But when it gets to be too many times, it's like that sage bundle. Okay. It has to be, you have to like stop it. And I don't edit the show. I could edit the show. But I don't. So part of it is like, so what do you do if I say um too many times? Are you just going to shut it off? Or will you maybe listen? Because maybe I'll, maybe I'm about to read a cool poem. Maybe I'm about to read some song lyrics that really move you and really make sense to you. Maybe I'm about to say something that uh, helps you get through whatever it is that you're going through, or maybe it gives you an idea to uh, take action on some sort. And I don't get up here fancying myself some kind of uh, spiritual guru trying to uh, bless the masses with my teachings. I'm up here. I'm talking about what I talk about. I'm talking about, what I like and I'm, I'm pushing my own thinking. So that's kind of where the ums come from. One is I'm not editing. So if you're listening to other podcasts and they don't say, um, maybe they don't say, um, but they're probably editing it out. That happens. So it's like, can you forgive? Like if I do a show that you don't like very much, because maybe you like some of the other ones and you'll, you know, like, is every episode of Seinfeld a, a winner? I don't know. Sometimes with One I Love by Walt Whitman. Sometimes with One I Love, I fill myself with rage for fear I effuse unreturned love. But now I think there is no unreturned love. The pay is certain one way or another. I loved a certain person ardently, and my love was not returned. Yet out of that, I have written these songs. I'm going to read something from the prophet Klug Brand. Uh, this, this one takes, this one's a little bit longer, but I think it'll be, uh, actually, it's not that long. It's not that long. Then said Almitra, speak to us of love. And he raised his head and looked upon the people, and there fell a stillness upon them. And with a great voice he said, when love beckons to you, follow him. Though his ways are hard and steep, and when his wings enfold you, yield to him. Though the sword hidden among his pinions may wound you, and when he speaks to you, believe in him. Though his voice may shatter your dreams as the north wind lays waste the garden. For even as love crowns you, shall show, for even as love crowns you, so shall he crucify you. Even as he is for your growth, so is he for your pruning. Even as he ascends to your height and caresses your tenderest branches that quiver in the sun, so shall he descend to your roots and shake them and they're clinging to the earth. Like sheaves of corn, he gathers you unto himself. He threshes you to make you naked. He sifts you to free you from your husks. He grinds you to whiteness. He kneads you until you are pliant. And then he assigns you to his sacred fire that you may become sacred bread for God's sacred feast. And these things shall love do unto you that you may know the secrets of your heart and in that knowledge become a fragment of life's heart. But if your fear you would seek only love's peace and love's pleasure, then it is better for you that you cover your nakedness and pass out of love's threshing floor. In the seasonless world where you shall laugh, but not all of your laughter and weep, but not all of your tears. Love gives not but itself and takes not but from itself. Love possesses not, nor would it be possessed 
for love is sufficient unto love. When you love, you should not say, God is in my heart, but rather, I am in the heart of God. And think not you can direct the course of love, for love, if it finds you worthy, directs your course. Love has no other desire but to fulfill itself. But if you love and must needs have desires, let these be your desires. To melt and be like a running brook that sings its melody to the night. To know the pain of too much tenderness. To be wounded by your own understanding of love. And to bleed willingly and joyfully. To wake at dawn with a winged heart and give thanks for another day of loving. To rest at the noon hour and meditate love's ecstasy. To return home at eventide with gratitude. And then to sleep with a prayer for your for the beloved in your heart and song of praise upon your lips. I like that part. Uh, well, I like the whole thing a lot. Where was it? Um, where was it? Sorry, I'm trying to find... Uh, Yeah, anyways. Oh, yeah. Into the seasonless world where you shall laugh, but not all of your laughter, and weep, but not all of your tears. Interesting. So, what do we do with that? If we're putting ourselves out there, if we meet someone and maybe, uh, you know, how long does it, do we give it, give time to syncopate if one person is into the other and the other one is thinking, oh, this is just a new friend. Because sometimes we don't have that benefit of being on the same page. Sometimes it takes a little while. Maybe somebody just got out of something. Maybe somebody is, uh, has been alone for a long time. So almost anyone seems right. What do we do with that? When I was at, I went climbing trees today. I went to the cemetery, Crown Hill Cemetery. And I was walking around and, and I, I go in the gates and there, and there's uh, some people like stopping people as they're coming in. And what they were doing was they were giving out flags. And so they asked if I was in need of any flags. And I said, sure, I'll take a couple. And I was like, are you taking donations or what? And he was like, yeah, but you don't, you don't have to donate. So I gave them a few dollars. And it's for uh, like the historical preservation of the cemetery. And uh, you now I drive in a little bit and I see a couple young deer. I drive a little bit farther, more young deer, and there's a bunch of young deer out there. And I usually see a good number of deer there. So I get out and I start walking around and I'm looking for trees to climb and I'm just like you know reading the gravestones and saying hi to the whoever's there if anybody i don't know if people hang out by their graves or not it seems like they would go somewhere else but you know if everybody did i guess there'd be you know you know quite a community <laughs> quite, quite a few people to hang out with if everybody does that but i get to this one and i'm walking by and it says baby girl and it has the last name. And I I walked by and I took a few more steps and it took a minute for that to sink in. And then I went back and I saw and it said Bob baby girl and the last name. And I looked and she just lived one day. So what was her name? Now, if her parents didn't give her a name, 
but they gave her a they gave her a grave right and i think this was from the 1960s if i remember right i took a picture of it actually and so i'm i'm standing there for a little bit and i'm looking and thinking like, should i give her a name no she what state is she in right now I won't tell you the name I, I gave her in my mind, but I did give her a name in my mind. No, I won't say it, but then I get to walk and I wipe the grave off a little bit, a little bit of the dirt and grass. And, uh, then when I was, I was started looking around there. If like, is there any kind of like dandelion or anything popped up? It looked like they mowed the lawn not too long ago. I don't know if dandelions are popping up yet anyway. They should be pretty soon, right? But uh, I found, I got like a little clover and like the leaf clover and like the, the flower the bud part of it, put it on the, on the grave. And, you know, and the part of me has that like struggle. I said, am I going to pick a, I'm like, it's not really killing the plant because it still has the roots, but so, but there's that, that act of picking that's, you know, do the plants like that? So I took it back. I took the, or I, I didn't take the, the, I took the clover, the flower, and the uh, leaves, the three leaf clover, put it on the grave and <laughs> kept on. I just kind of wondered what is that one year old doing right now? Is, is there some kind of action? Is there some kind of active conscious um, thing happening with her? And is she mad that she didn't get a name? Did her parents like think of a name and, and they just, it, it was just easier for them to get through this is just, it's a baby girl. They still got the, still got the headstone, still got the grave, but maybe it's just easier for them at the time, I would imagine they would regret not giving her a name. So I don't know. So I gave her a little name. And I get to walk in a while, and I, when I see the squirrels, or when I see the deer, I'll do like a, I'll, I'll wave at them. I think some of them, I think they get to know me a little bit. It kind of seems like it. Like, uh, there's this guy again that's always taking pictures of us like he's never seen us before for the millionth time. Like, hi. And there was one young male and he was laying in the grass and I was like, Oh, I'll see if I can get close. And, um, usually when, uh, if, if I see them start to like go the other way, then I, then I go, I turn around and I go away. I, I don't want to scare them off. I don't want to bother them like that. And I, I get to walking more and more and, and climbing up some different trees, like the first few of them, I don't get very high. Um, it would just be really difficult to get up high. And I'm looking at these different trees and there's some trees that just seem like they, they want you to go and play in them. They want you to climb them. They want you to swing from their branches and have fun and breathe with them. See, in these trees, now you imagine these root systems, these trees, and you have these bodies in the, in the graveyard and you have these trees. So these trees, wouldn't they have a part of these people in them. If so, what part? And does that even, does it even matter? Is it just like stuff? Just stuff? Or is there, is there a little bit of like consciousness that like sticks with that, these mm -hmm. elements that the tree will use for nutrients? Is there a little bit of our consciousness that sticks with that?
and so maybe like baby girl would be one one day old maybe she's maybe she gets to be in like in one of those trees and then maybe there's other kids that'll come and maybe there's other kids that play in those trees uh, But I'm like looking around and I see like somebody that lived from like 1880 something to 1970. Like, wow, good, good for you. You got 80 some years out of this thing. And, and then there's a five year old. And then there's a 50, 52, 70, 60. We, we just don't know what we're going to get in this world, do we? We don't, we don't know how much time we have. So I'd say we should spend our time wisely. Because it is clicking away. Sometimes we don't get the opportunities that we would like. Like I have a, what I call my job job. I work at a factory. I mentioned it a bunch of times. Sorry if that gets annoying, but I work from five in the morning until 1 p.m. And then I have my uh, clients at the gym in the afternoons and evenings. And so when I'm with my clients, I, f I feel like that's, that's the kind of stuff I'm supposed to be doing. That's the kind of, and, um, then when I'm at the factory, I'm not there because I have a real big passion for it. I'm, I'm there because it, it pays pretty decent. It's steady. So I do that. Bills are knocked out. And then I don't have to uh, – you know, I guess it just makes things a little bit more comfortable for me by going through that discomfort of waking up earlier than I want, going to a place I'd rather not go to, driving a half hour to get there. Uh, it's not forever. The training stuff I'll, I'll be doing forever. I can't even imagine wanting to retire from it. It's, um, it's just like part of what I do. It's part of me. And it's like, like what Ram Dass says is like when he was doing his lectures, he's like, my, this is part of my work. I'm, I'm helping other people. Helping other people is how I work on, on myself. And so, you know, and he, he's up there and he, he's, what are people listening for? And I think I'll, I'm, I'm a big fan of Ram Dass. I, I like what he, he says a lot. I like the way he talks. He has that groovy 60 ways. 60s way of speaking and um, I just like the way he phrases things and well, when we're but so can we forgive ourselves when we're not singing in tune it's so like when I go to the factory it's not like I'm miserable I mean it's, it's not a, a bad job at all uh, it's uh I don't uh, get mad when I'm there and a couple guys that I work with on, on that, on the machine that I'm on they're they're cool guys we joke around and it's fun. There's another guy, he's on a different machine. Uh, Anthony, he's like 23, 24 uh, year old. And um, so like we walk by each other and we're, you know, flexing our muscles and, It'll look like a Mr. Olympia showdown for for a couple minutes. It's it's hilarious, and uh, I don't know how that got started. I don't know how it started, but that, it's just like our 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 thing. There might be other people around too, and we'll just be watching by some we'll be walking by each other, or we'll just like be sitting staring at staring at one some he'll be staring at me, or I'll be staring at him, and then another one will turn around and see, and then the pose off begins. It's, it's funny. 
But so uh, I've been looking through these uh, some different poets. I was reading a lot of Rumi. I read from the prophet Khalil Gibran somewhat often. And so I've been trying to get more into uh, Thoreau and uh, Walt Whitman. Okay. Well, this is what I just turned to. Uh, let's see how long this is. Um, oh, it's okay. Uh, I'm going to read this. Be not simply good. Well, the art of living a mean, meaningful life. Elements of a quality life. Live simply. Do quality work that is not rushed. Avoid waste. Live below your means and keep a reserve. Set aside a substantial of your substantial portion of your time for leisure. I just turned to this randomly. That's what I was just talking about. Funny how that works sometimes. Right? Be not simply good. Be good for something. I cannot tell you what I am more than a ray of the summer sun. What I am, I am, and say not. Being is the great explainer. Time. If not aware of its inestimable value, sell it to the highest bidder for cash and always be cheated. No one but a fool ever sold more of his time than he had to. Pursue some path, however narrow and crooked, in which you can walk with love and reverence. Wherever a man separates from the multitude and goes his own way, there is a fork in the road. Though the travelers along the highway see only a gap in the paling. Goodness is the only investment that never fails. There is no more fatal blunderer than he who consumes the greater part of his life getting his living. A man should greet each day, each dawn joyfully and always consider the nights too long and absenting from one's work. Thoreau is quoted by Sigmund Olson in his diary. Most men lead lives of quiet desperation and go to the grave with the song still in them. As a single footstep will not make a path on this earth, so a thing, single thought will not make a pathway in the mind. To make a deep physical path, we walk again and again. To make a deep mental path, we must think over and over the kind of thoughts we wish to dominate our lives. What the banker sighs for, the meanest clown may have, leisure and a quiet mind. It is not enough to be industrious, so are the ants. What are you industrious about? I say, beware of all enterprises that require new clothes and not rather a new wearer of clothes. We should come home from adventures and perils and discoveries every day with new experience and character. A truly good book teaches me better than to read it. I must soon lay it down and commence living on its hint. When I begin by reading, I must finish by acting. One is wise to cultivate the tree that bears fruit in our soul. The most amazing things thing about the pyramids in Egypt is that enough people could be found degraded enough to build them for they should have taken that ambitious booby the pharaoh and drowned him in the Nile how about that I think I read some of that uh, a show or two ago but that was just flipped open randomly Interesting. So what do we do? Like, I th see like, um, I'm like on this like dating app and I don't spend very much time on it. I'll open it up and I'll swipe a couple and then I'm, I put it down and next day I might swipe a couple more and, it's one where the wo the woman has to send the first message. So if you match up then the woman sends the first message and, 
so sometimes I'll get into these conversations and these, you know, back and forth messaging. And then I guess one of us will lose interest. Like there's some that's like, I'm kind of going back and forth. I'm not like super interested, but there's some kind of quality that has me interested. And then I'll just let it fade away. And it's like, what am I, am I missing something? You know, this person that seems really interested and I'm tr trying to give it my, her, my interest. And I'm, I get to where I'm like, I'm just not interested in that. And you know, why is it something that's just going on in my head? Is it something that's <laughs> true or am I, am I missing something like, Oh, this could have been great. You were, you know, you both like, um, the same band or whatever. So when you're meeting someone and there's these books about it, all these like dating books and I've, I don't think I've ever read all of one, but a guy recommended one to me. I, I didn't even know it was a dating book. I thought it was more like a business thing because it was called like being a 3% man or something like that. And I thought, at the time we were talking like business, like business stuff. Maybe we, I don't, I don't know, but I didn't know from the title, but I was like, okay, cool. I looked it up. I requested it from library, get it. And it's like, Oh, it's about basically how to pick up women and like what to do, what not to do. You don't, and you don't want to be needy and you don't want to be, but it's, I wasn't resonating with what he was talking about. There is like this formula that, that guys will follow and it's probably not a big secret that like, like when like if you want a woman to want you or to, or to chase you you have to seem like you don't really care because if you seem like you're too eager then that throws her off and she will maybe lose interest. So the formula, if you're going to follow the rules, uh, is to like seem like you're not really interested. And you know, it, it goes on. So I'm reading this book and it's talking about like some of the stuff. I mean, it, it just wasn't for me. I don't always follow. I don't really follow those rules on how to get quote unquote women. So what I'll do if I'm interested, I'll make it pretty clear and I'll just <laughs> see what happens. And sometimes it's not easy to, to know at first. So you like throw out a little bid. There's something like there's a concept called the bid and it's even like for like buddies, like you know, another a guy that I might, uh, hang out with, or, um, you know, it's not necessarily like a romantic relationship thing, but so where you'll be like, okay, Hey, I'm going out to, uh, the woods today. Do you want to go? And then they say, no, I, no, I can't like, okay, that's one thing. And then it's something else where it's like, no, I can't today, but what are you doing next weekend? Uh, what about next Sunday? Are you available then? Well, then they're like answering your bid. And so that's a good sign. So if somebody's like, do you want to go out, uh, out to the woods? And no. Okay. Uh, it probably means don't really bother. So if you're in a relationship and you're trying to, or if you're interested in someone and you throw out that bid and you're a guy and you're asking a woman out and you're trying to feel that out, what's that bidding situation? So if you throw out your bid 
and it may not, you know, may not make it like clear that yes, this is a date I'm interested in this. Maybe it's a, at the very beginning. You're just wanting to uh, see what happens, see what you think. You've talked a little bit. You have some stuff in common. You find her attractive and interesting. You throw out that bid. Do you want to go do something? A cup of coffee go to a park or whatever. And if the answer is just no, then there's your answer. But if the answer is no, I, I can't, or I can't today. How about next week? Well, that's a lot better. That sounds a lot better. So what I would say is if someone is answering your bid with another bid, it's a good sign. But if they're not, probably don't keep pursuing that. And so what would make you not accept? Like sometimes when people, like you, know, like you see these pictures of people online, like you see their Facebook pictures, and then uh, when you meet, they, they don't look like that. And not that they've used any kind of filter or... Uh, trying to pass themselves off as 20 years young, younger or whatever. Which is like some people don't look like that. I think I look a lot different in some different in different pictures. Uh, so maybe like what you're not attracted to is those false images where if you met in person, maybe you would feel something different. That's kind of like when I'm in these messaging, messaging with these women on this dating app. It's like, do you, I'll, I'll usually like try to find them on Facebook or something because <clears throat> like some of them will include their Instagram so that they can get like Instagram followers. You're on a dating site and they're sharing their Instagram. To me, that's weird. Uh, that, that's just, that's a weird one for me. I don't share my Instagram for one. Uh, well, I just think that's weird. I'm not trying to get Instagram followers off of a, a dating site or, or maybe it's not that maybe they're not just looking for followers. Although it does seem like some of them, that's what it is. And it's like, okay, here's me. Here's a good way to look at like what I'm trying to do, except for these you know, six pictures on here. You know, here's, you can go through these hundred pictures and what I'm talking about in these different situations and videos. So I think people could see a little bit more, a lot more about me if they look at my Instagram than not. But so maybe I was being a little judgmental there. Still not going to do it though. So, like now, it was a while before I was interested in anyone. Now I might be interested in someone. I don't know. We'll see. But back to singing out of tune. So what I was thinking of is, so I play guitar. And uh, I just got, well, I've had this one notebook for a while and I started doing like a martial arts um, curriculum in it. And I, I didn't get very far with that, but well, I'm going to get back into writing. I used to write a lot. And so some of the songs I play on guitar, I wrote a long time ago. You know, I started playing guitar when I was 13. I was writing songs when I was in high school. So I want to get back to writing and playing. It's like when I'm practicing, I used to play some pretty cool stuff. And now when I play, I'm not put some stuff on Instagram. My Instagram is at Hadley Fitness. And it's like, I, I usually, I'll get compliments on it, but I, I, I hear a lot of mistakes.
you know, is anybody like I hear like Joe Rogan talk about how he doesn't like the stuff that he puts out. You know, he he works really hard on his comedy and the podcast, and he's like he's hard on himself. And I think a lot of artists are hard on themselves. They're, they're not happy with that thing. And he was saying like at the end of like he'll record a comedy special, so it's done and it's published and it's out there for people to rent. And then he thinks of a better way to end a joke that's on there. He's like, oh, man, if I would have just waited another month, I would have had this better ending. So it's always like something, I guess, in the artist that drives us bonkers. I'm going to read a little bit more. I hope I'm making, making sense today. I usually make out a thing to follow, but, oh, cool. Uh, this is from Earth, My Likeness, Nature Poetry of Walt Whitman. This is from The Lesson of a Tree, September 1st. I should not take either the biggest or the most picturesque tree to illustrate it. Here is one of my favorites now before me, a fine yellow poplar, quite straight, perhaps 90 feet high and four thick at the butt. How strong, vital, enduring, how dumbly eloquent. What suggestions of imperturbability and being as against the human trait of mere seeming. Then the qualities, almost emotional, emotional, palpably artistic, heroic of a tree, so innocent and harmless, yet so savage. It is, yet says nothing. How it rebukes by its tough and equable serenity all weathers, this gusty, tempered little whiffet man that runs indoors at a mite or of rain or snow. Science, or rather halfway science, scoffs at reminiscence of dryad and homodryad and of trees speaking. But if they don't, they do as well as most speaking, writing, poetry, sermons, or rather they do a great deal better. I should say indeed that those old dryad reminiscences are quite as true as any and profound, profounder than most reminiscence we get. Reminiscences we get. Cut this out, as the quack mediciners say, and keep by you. Go and sit in the grove or woods with one or more of those voiceless companions and read the foregoing and think. Whew. That's good. I like it. So I started out, I was talking about climbing the tree, right? Sometimes it's, this is random. You know, I, I used to, I will again, like uh, sort through this, these books. And on my table now I have three, six, eight books. And there's, I think like four more on my couch that I was going through before. And I pretty much picked out, uh, well, two. Once I got up to the table and I started thinking up here, uh, I picked out the two about love. The one was from Walt Whitman and the other from Claude Gabran. But there is something about climbing those trees and just it's a way to get rid of the thoughts once you're climbing and you get higher and higher and you're 10 feet off the ground, 20 feet off the ground, maybe 30 feet off the ground, all you're focusing on is where you're putting your foot. And then you're focusing on where you're grabbing. Is that limb strong enough or isn't it? Maybe. That, trend, that limb might be strong enough. I want, to, I want to keep going up higher. And that limb is probably strong enough. Is that good enough? Maybe it's, you could say, like a 40-year-old climbing 30 feet in a tree 
is taking a risk. But to me, it's all uh, is measured risks. So I'm not going to hang from a limb I don't think is going to hold me. I better be quite sure of it. But I suppose it is some pretty risky behavior. And whatever. But just like you said, there's like something about hanging out with these trees. And then maybe when we get to be hanging around other people, we're able to stay with them when they're singing out of tune. You know, did she really mean to say that like that? Did she misinterpret what I just said? I said that to make her feel better, but I think I messed up and made it worse. You know, how many times do we, we do that sort of thing? Well, I think I'll wrap it up there. Let me, uh, I'll end it by with one more random, semi-random, there's one really long one in here. There's a couple really long ones in here. Okay, maybe it won't be exactly random. Twilight Song, how about that? A Twilight Song. As I sit in twilight late alone by the flickering oak flame, musing on long past war scenes of the countless buried unknown soldiers of the vacant names as unidented heirs and seas, the unreturned. The brief truce after battle with grim burial squads in the deep filled trenches of gathered dead from all America, north, south, east, west, whence they came up. From wooded Maine, New England's farms from fertile Pennsylvania, Illinois, Ohio. From the measureless west, Virginia, the south, the Carolinas, Texas. Even here in my room, shadows and half-lights and the noiseless flickering flames. Again, I see the stalwart ranks on filing, rising. I hear the rhythmic tramp of the armies. You million unwritten names all, all. You dark bequest from all the war. A special verse for you. A flash of duty long neglected. Your mystic role strangely gathered here. Each name recalled by me from out the darkness and death's ashes. Hence forced to be deep, deep within my heart recording for many a future year. Your mystic role entire of unknown names or north or south. Embalmed with love in this twilight song. 1890. Walt Whitman, if I'm not mistaken, was a nurse, a volunteer nurse in the Civil War. Um, pretty sure. I, I read that just a little bit ago. I'm not trying to pretend like I've known that for a long time. Well, this is Memorial Day weekend. That was pretty random. I mean, I flipped through and then read it because there's some in here that are really long, leaves of grass and stuff. But random enough. Thank you for tuning in to Fitness and Consciousness. And be easy on yourself and be easy on others. See you next time.